Kalendar Mirë Mrama dhe Mirë Sevinin emisionin Jeta në Kosovë. Ditve të fundit, misioni e uleksit në Kosovë është përbalur edhe me një afer të madhe. Maria Bamej, e cila dhe rjavën e kaluar, ka qenë prokurore e uleksit, ka dalur publikisht me akuza se jetimet në e uleks janë të ndikuara politikisht, se ka pasur rjedhjet të informatave nga zyrja e uleksit dhe se të akuzuarit janë informuar për rjedhjen e jetimeve. Dhe më e rënda, se dyshimet për korupcion dhe rushfet ndaj njerit nga gjukacit e uleksit janë heshtur dhe nuk janë konsideruar seriosisht nga misioni. Me mua në studio janë familjarët e të akuzuarve dhe të viktimave të rastit të quajtur vrasja e tre fesht që ka ndodhur i vitin 2007 në afërsi të kaqanikut, ku janë vrar një 16 vjeqar, një 17 vjeqar dhe një 28 vjeqar, të gjithë antarë të familjes baftiu. Këta familjarë së bashku me familjarët e të dënuarve, të gjithë kërkojnë rigjukim. Familjarët po ashtu pohojnë se kanë grumbulluar 300.000 euro për tja paguar Francesco Florit, këti gjukatësit të cilin e ka ekspozuar Maria Bamej, për t'i hedhur posht akuzat ndaj shpenqerimit dhe besnika sani që sot janë të dënuar dhe janë në burtë të bravës. Si pas tyre, këto para kanë mjaftuar, në fundë është kuptuar që këto kanë mjaftuar vetëm për të liruar nësret cenën të akuzuar në tretë. E para si të flasim me këta familjarë që i kam në studio, të ndëgjojmë intervistat me Maria Bamejn, prokurorën e suspenduar të e uleksit, sepse është suspenduar dhe si janë heshtur jetimet, si kanë rjedhur informata e jetimeve të e uleksit. Të dëgjojmë që kam tha ajo mua dje kure bëra këtë intervistë. Maria Bamej, Can you tell me a little bit about yourself? We know you were a special prosecutor until last week. Tell us a bit more about your background. What did you do? Who are you? Uh, I'm just a prosecutor doing my job in the UK. I'm from the United Kingdom. I was a prosecutor there for 17 years. And I've been in Kosovo for the last seven years um, doing, doing the job of a prosecutor. What exactly have you done in Kosovo? for all these years? I've done many, many cases. I can highlight some of them. They've nearly all been high-profile cases. Uh, I did a case of Marko Sivon Simonovic, um, which was an ethnic hatred case when I first arrived in Kosovo. Um, he was sentenced to 15 years. I did a war crimes case against uh, a man called Vujovic, he was sentenced to five years. Uh, I've done the Clinton bombing case where they were sentenced to 25 years. I've also done the case uh, against the Ministry of Community and Returns where I prosecuted two ministers and one permanent secretary together with other lesser officials and they were sentenced to three years each. Have you done any Albanian politicians? I've done Zabrzaku, the mayor of um, Kachanik. I have um, also prosecuted Ilair Tolai, who was a permanent secretary in the Ministry of Health. And you've also done Sami Ljushtaku on the case where I'm involved, but since I am an involved part in that, I don't want to talk about that. I want to move on to the revelations that have began about you this week. In the daily newspaper Kohaditore, this week you have talked about allegations of corruption within EU Lex. Okay. What's going on with this darker side of EU Lex exactly? Well, firstly, I want to say that up to yesterday I had no contact whatsoever with Kohaditore. I never handed them or anybody else any documents. I thought it was important that I had to protect my reputation, which was being denigrated by Ulex. How were they denigrating your reputation exactly? Uh, they were suggesting that uh, I was not good as a prosecutor, and they were trying to defame my character by suspending me for having spoken to the press when I hadn't done so. And um, 
for many years since I made a complaint of corruption, I've been the subject of victimization time and time again. They were not doing anything about it. And they decided to shoot the messenger rather than deal with the message. And I was under attack from them. And the only way I can protect myself is because I'm bringing a claim against them in Brussels was to come out now and speak about portals. what has actually happened. Today, today Kosovo portals are full of stories about you. Did you talk to any of them? No, I didn't. Only to Koha de Torre yesterday and to you today. And I'm talking to some international media in the course of this week. Tell us exactly what are you accusing EULEX of? And why now? Why now when the mission has suspended you? Well, I haven't accused them now. I accused them in 2012. I didn't even accuse them. I said, listen, I've come across intercepts in the course of my work, which suggests that there is something suspicious going on with the chief ULEX prosecutor and Mr. Francesco Floret. How did you have access to this? I was investigating the Tolai case and we had lawful interceptions on Mr. Tolai. Mr. Tolai was in regular contact with intermediaries. These intermediaries were allegedly meeting with Francesco Floret to negotiate the release of Iler Tolai. Francesco, Who's Francesco Florit? For... He is a chief ULEX judge. He was president of the Assembly of Judges. Hang on. Uh, the, the one, the suspected Secretary of Ministry of Health was meeting with the head of, uh, of appeals judge? Yes. He's of ULEX? In... Yes. Personally he was meeting? No, he was in prison. But he had his intermediaries meeting Francesco and then reporting back to him. Saying what? When, that, when, when the intermediaries were, meet, uh, were meeting with the Italian judge, what were they saying in these intercepts? They were saying that Francesco Florit cannot get involved at this stage because we're at the investigative stage, but he's going to speak to my boss, Yaroslava. The plan was to remove me from the case and put somebody else in my place who would then release Mr. Tolai. Are you sure this is not uh, part of your paranoia? I'm not paranoid. I know you, Lex, have tried to suggest I am, but these are facts. How? What are they your facts They are contained on this? in interceptions, which, by the way, for you, Lex's information, I still am in possession of, and which you have the voices of the intermediaries speaking to Mr. Tolai on his phone, reporting back what Francesco had said to them. Do you have any other proof? Did, uh, did the behavior of your superiors change towards you after? Oh, uh, definitely. You challenged them with this or they yes. knew about this? How? Firstly, I went to the head of justice. I went to my line manager, CNA Duteston. She said I had to report it. It was so serious, I had to report it. And it was my duty to report it, which I precisely did. No one told me about whistleblowing laws, that I should be protected, that I can give this information anonymously. And, and you, uh, you formally reported through the formal grievances, which we have access uh, yeah, no, to. No, before that, I reported directly to the head of justice in front of Yaroslava, and I had to confront her directly. Who's Yaroslava? So Yaroslava Novotna was the person who was involved with Francesco Floret, and who was the person who was interfering in my case, trying to get me off the case. Did she really try to get you off? Well, what is your proof she tried to get you off, apart from the intercepts? Apart from the intercepts, she came to see me, uh, the intercept said she was meeting with me to get me off the case. Then I did have a meeting with her that day. So obviously the people in the intercepts knew about my meeting with her. So I emailed her and I said, hold on a minute. Are we meeting about Clinton bombing or Tolai? Oh, no, no, about Clinton bombing. So I said, because your names are all over my intercepts. So I'm very concerned about this. And when she came to meet me, 
she knew chapter and verse all the rules about removing a prosecutor from a case. Even I hadn't looked it up that far. Is that enough proof? She just knew her job. The proof was that she hasn't interfered in anybody else's cases in the way she interfered with mine. The proof is that that meeting, I gave her a ruling of initiation of investigation, which she asked for. I gave it to her at 6 p.m. and I only gave her the English version. She didn't need the Albanian version. She doesn't speak Albanian. And then did you find results of your uh, The next day at 12 p.m., midday, the suspects were on the phone. They had met someone from Yaroslava's office who had translated my ruling into Albanian for them. They were speaking to each other reading and repeating verbatim what was in my ruling. That ruling came from her office because on the intercepts they say they came from her office. How was this hampering your investigation exactly? It totally hampers my investigation. My ruling was secret. It was labelled with the court as not to be disclosed to the suspects. She leaked it to the suspects. When I met her and confronted her, she said it had been in a safe. Well, it could not possibly have been in a safe because somebody was reading it to the suspects. But these intermediaries are people who hang around and try to contact not only Yaroslava Novotma that you have accused, but try to contact others. They try to contact you too. They did indeed. So why meeting with them uh, is, is simple? No. How do you know they were intermediaries? She could say, I didn't know they were intermediaries. A meeting with them is sinful if you are part of the plan. And she clearly, there is prima facie evidence that she was participating in a plan because everything on the intercepts was happening in reality. But, but the leak could have come out of your office. How did you know? It, didn't it did come not out come out of my office. How do you know? Because I had that ruling for nearly a year. It was with the court for nearly a year. No one leaked it. If they were going to leak it, they would leak the Albanian version. The only the leak that came was from the English version, and she was the only one who'd got that version. What happened afterwards with the Tola case, exactly? You were not, after all, you were not removed from the case, so she didn't get to be no. successful, no. if you say that was her intention. Yeah. Uh, because... We wrote letters, I wrote my grievance, um, and a lot of um, things happened, which resulted in the case proceeding. She was interfering even at the time of the um, confirmation hearing. How? She phoned the judge, Mariola Pasnik, who was dealing with the confirmation. And said what? She, I don't know what she said to the judge, but she came back to me and said, oh, actually, there may be something to your case after all. Then, Why is this suspicious? Well, she shouldn't be speaking to judges about my case. There should be separation between prosecutors and judges. Then my case was confirmed. They were absolutely furious with the way I drafted the indictment because in my indictment, I'd put in all the intercepts. I'd given uh, disclosure of all the intercepts to the defence lawyers, including Mr Tolai. I had put in the intercepts which implicated Francesco and Yaroslava. On my panel was Judge Mikula, who was a close friend of Yaroslava's. I was treated with hostility during the whole of that trial by the judges. How do you know that uh, being placed in the trial is, is a conspiracy against uh, you? Isn't there some sort of, some form of independent way of choosing judges in Eolex? Absolutely not. What do you mean? With the local How judges, there's a voting or a ticket system. With the international judges, they don't have any system mm. other than the chief ULEX prosecute, uh, the chief, the president of the assembly of judges and the chief judge for each region will determine which judges he's got available to sit in any particular case. So how did Novotna, being a chief prosecutor, not a chief judge, uh, influence uh, Mikula to be another Czech person to be precisely in your trial? 
because she had contact with the judges. She was friendly with the judges. She was friendly with Francesco, as is clear from the interceptions. Um, regarding Tola, you have, in the interview published in Coaditore, also accused a Minister of Justice, uh, Hayredin Kuchi, for interfering in the case. In which way did he actually interfere in the case? Hayredin Kuchi did not directly interfere in my case. He uh, gave permission to uh, Astrid Harichia to go to the prison to make a visit to Tolai. Um, I looked into this. I believe he did so innocently uh, and um, wrongly believed that he was entitled to do Why so. does a minister is ever uh, allowed or put in position to allow another politician to visit a suspect in prison? Well, that shouldn't be the case. But in Kosovo, a lot of people do not um, react upon good advice and may just react on the spur of, can I go and visit him? Oh, yeah, of course you can, rather than a considered decision. There was no criminal intent in relation to but this issue. Minister of Justice licensing someone to go and visit. It was wrong. He shouldn't have done it. How do you know this did not affect your investigation, this visit? Was Astrid Arachia in any form a witness or involved in the no, investigation? No, Arastri Arachia was not involved in my case, but obviously this was a case um, which involved allegations of corruption. And at that time, I think Astrid Harachia was being investigated by the local prosecutors for a similar allegation. So allowing another suspect in another investigation, which in the public it was known that Astrid Harachia was a suspect in another case, to visit another uh, politician, uh, health secretary, is not, uh, is not wrong? Well, it's not a crime if there is no criminal intent. If somebody does something without the intention, if Mr. Haradin Kuchi had sat there and thought, oh dear, I must send Astra Arachia to sort out Tolai to make sure their stories coordinate or something, yes, then there would be criminal intent, but that was not the way my evidence came out. I had no evidence that Mr. Haradin Kuchi behaved with the necessary criminal intent. Anyway, in this case, you got, uh, you got the suspect sentence. The court decided uh, to, punish, uh, to punish Mr. Tolai. I will, that's why I will move on to the next case. The, uh, Tolai was not the only qua case where you started an investigation against ULEX uh, or accused ULEX of corruption. Which other case? Okay, let me go through the chronology. It might help you to understand. In 2009, there was an article while I was doing Clinton bombing one case, and I cannot now remember which newspaper. Clinton bombing is uh, the bombing of the Sekiracha Club, which was done in retribution for Trim Triumph Riza's murder. murder. Yeah. And this was done by a unit of, a special Rosten. unit of, 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 of police uh, yeah. officers. Go ahead. Uh, whilst I was doing the first trial against Besnik, Hassani, Shpen Karimi and Nusret Sena, there was an article in one of the press that suggested that um, Francesco Flora had been paid money. And I took no notice of it whatsoever and I carried on with my trial, not suspecting anything at all. So this is the same judge, Francesco Florit, which we can see in the, uh, in the photo here, is the same judge uh, as previously involved? He was the judge who dealt with the Clinton bombing. Okay. And the triple murder. Okay, so this article comes out in the newspaper? This article comes out in the middle of my trial in the newspaper. And uh, you know newspapers write everything. Do you trust I, this article? I didn't trust the article at the time. And? I thought it was far-fetched and I didn't, I just carried on with my case. And? Thereafter, the um, triple murder case happened and Francesco Florit tried to sit on the panel of judges, but he was taken off the case 
because the defense objected, because he actually found them guilty of the triple murder in the Clinton bombing case when they were never even charged with that, which was quite embarrassing for me as a prosecutor. Anyway, I carried on doing my investigations and started looking into Tolai. I came across the intercepts and I remembered back what happened in 2009 in Clinton. I had a whole load of intercepts implicating uh, Francesco and Yaroslava. I spoke to my line manager. She so the same intermediaries that were talking to uh, Yaroslava, the chief uh, prosecutor, were talking to the judge, Francesco Flori, too, in your intercepts? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It was the same people chatting to both of them. What were the intercepts referring to in relation to Florit? What were they saying about Florit? They were saying that he was a good man, how he was going to help them. He couldn't do so as yet. Uh, but, I mean, it's all in the indictment. The indictment's public knowledge. All, uh, well, not all of them, but the majority of the intercepts. In the Tolai indictment? In the Tolai indictment. And what happened? Uh, is there anything else to, to prove? Did you ever challenge, did you ever take these allegations to Florida if this I is so indeed. public notice? I did. Did you challenge him? I did. I called him to my office. How, what did you ask him? I, I had to get a statement from him because here I am with these highly suspicious interceptions, which I cannot hide. I have to disclose them to the defense and I have to be able to explain them to the judges and to the people. <coughs> what did he say to you? He gave me uh, a statement, but before he gave me the statement, he said, oh my God, I've been so naive. I met with this intermediary, Eyup Kamberi. I only met him twice. I don't believe there were only two meetings, but that was his story. I only met him twice. Yeah. Listen, how can you only meet someone twice? Uh, you know, one time you realize they're an intermediary, second time? Well, the first time he says, in his written statement, which is public knowledge, it is before the court, he said that he met with this person, they were organized some round table conference, and the person started to talk about Fatmi Alimai. And he didn't meet him after that, except that this person kept harassing him with phone calls, and he met him a second time. And this time he tried to discuss Tolai case, and then he threw him out. Well, the intercepts don't reveal any throwing out of anybody. They reveal detailed conversations with him. Um, and conversations that must have come from a legally qualified person because they talk about specific legal procedures that the ordinary person would not know about. So, as far as I was concerned, there's a grounded suspicion there. He also said to me, and oh my God, I was so worried the last time when they were talking in the press because I just happened to have 300,000 euros to pay off my mortgage. And I was shocked by this because I could say for the rest of my life and I won't have 300,000 pounds to pay off my mortgage. The Italian judge admitted to you that he uh, had 300,000 in his account that paid off his house. Yeah. But there was a family member uh, in the case you were investigating, family member of the accused, uh, brother of Besnik Asani, who was saying it's precisely that money that he collected for Florid. But I didn't know that at the time. That came later when later. I started investigating Clinton bombing too. Okay, at which point? I want to ask you about this because we have another source. We have this uh, record of witness interview that has come to us. The brother of Besnik Hassani, Florim Hassani, has come to us and allowed us to use the uh, the record of witness interview, process verbal, as we call it in Albanian, where he gave a statement to Eulex police, where he testified that he gave. 250 to 300,000 euros he collected to give to Francesco Florit, the Italian judge. And he did this through Mahmoud Halimi, 
the uh, uh, his his lawyer and right. they said they did this in Albania he has allowed us to use this statement because family members have been asking for retrial because they gave that money thinking they will be released and what happened Flori didn't deliver maybe he wasn't corrupt after I all I don't know and I cannot comment on the ghost investigation because I do not in want to just jeopardize that investigation in any way whatsoever. Is there an investigation going on? There is an investigation, but let me explain to you the chronology. At the time that I spoke to Francesco Floret for the statement I was dealing with the Tolai case, that was 2012. Mm -hmm. I made the report in 2012. Ulex did nothing about that report and uh, Francesco left, but Yaroslava carried on. After that, I started to look into the Clinton bombing two case. What is that? That is the second part of Clinton bombing to prosecute the other people who participated in the bombing of the Seki Rajabha with Besnik and Spend. And in the course of that investigation, I got the information from Besnik and Spend that this money had been paid to Francesco. You're now, talking about Besnika, Sonia and Spencerini, who are now in jail, yeah. serving a jail sentence for Clinton bombing for, yeah. what, 25 years? 25 years, yeah. But they've been also punished for the triple murder case, which you started investigating, and which you think they're not guilty for? I didn't investigate that case at all. Why? Why not? Because it was never my case. Ne ever. It was the case of Gianfranco Gallo, in Antmik times, and it then became the case of Reshep Malaku in um, SPRK. Uh, so I never investigated and I had never had any dealings or made any decisions on that case. But I do know that Francesco Floret wanted to be the judge in that case and the defence objected to it. But in relation to the Clinton bombing case, a year after I'd made my allegations in Tolai, the police came to me with evidence like that, saying that they had paid 300,000 to Francesco. They yeah. wanted me to complain to Ulex to investigate the matter. I told them I'd already complained in an earlier case and Ulex did nothing. Why do you think Ulex did nothing? I think Ulex did nothing because they were trying to hide it. They found it so embarrassing that they couldn't cope with it. The easiest thing for them to have done there and then is to come out and say, we've had some serious allegations against the chief Ulex prosecutor and the president of the Assembly of Kosovo. We are taking those allegations seriously, although it must be borne in mind that people are innocent and proved guilty but we're going to look into those allegations and deal with them as appropriate. This is a proof that they did eventually open investigation because we have a witness interview. They were forced into that. Forced by who? That witness interview was not selected in the course of the investigation. That witness interview was, select, was obtained by my police officers investigating Clinton bombing. It wasn't you, Lex, investigating that obtained who? that interview. Then who it was it? me. But this... It was my investigation into Clinton bombing that resulted in that statement. But in the end, your investigation resulted in an official investigation. Why are you complaining that there isn't any? All right, let me Florence. explain to you. Let me explain. For six, no, for 18 months, they sat and did nothing. Then the police found these statements, yeah? They went to the head of mission and said, investigate. He said no initially. And I have the emails from the officers to show how disappointed they were that Ulex, despite getting those statements, still did not want to investigate. And then the, the, at the same time, I was being done by Yaroslava for parking and for... Um, whoa, 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 whoa. What do you mean being done by Yaroslava by parking? for parking. She had recommended me for disciplinary investigation for illegal parking and having an intern. This happened at the same time. Illegal parking? You park illegally? 
I was investigated, formal investigation at taxpayers' money for illegal parking. After you've officially put your grievance? Uh, yeah, but please. But you agree you illegally park? I agree park. I illegally park. Uh -huh. But everybody else gets an email warning. I get a full-scale investigation. But that's another story. Please let me yes. explain about this because it's so important. I went mad when they tried to investigate me for illegal parking and having an intern. These investigations were initiated by Yaroslava and Jonathan Rattel. Mm -hmm. I could not, for the life of me, understand why I had emails from my police saying they would not investigate this a serious allegation of corruption at the same time they're investigating for me. Why couldn't you get support from your boss, Jonathan Rattel? Jonathan Rattel was in with Yaroslava. How, how come? How come you didn't try to argue your case? You Westerners are argumentative, you no, argue. Oh, Jonathan Rattel, when it comes to anything, says, oh, I do not know anything. If you ask him to speak to his higher-ups, oh, sorry, I can't, way above my pay grade. But hang on, the official grievance you did, you sent in his address to. Did you get any reply from Rattel? I was never given a reply to any of my allegations. They were buried. They are buried to this day. It is unlawful of them not to formally respond to but, me. But one of the family members of, of uh, the punished uh, came to us telling us, uh, the, the brother of Shpen Cherimi, which uh, uh, Ilir Cherimi, came to us and gave us a document which showed that he has officially uh, asked Yaroslava to look into Florid and investigate Florid for 300,000 euros given to him. Uh, Yaroslava Novotna replied that it is uh, um, that, that, um, that people who work in the EULEX mission are under immunity. Nobody is immune for criminal offences. Are you sure that people positive. like yourself are not immune, can just get off? Because we're used to Kosovo. We had UNMIC that were, was UNMIC Romanian police that was accused of murdering protesters. They get off very lightly. It was criminal procedures. They went back to Romania and not in jail. No, no, no. That is because of the Romanian authorities. If you're seconded and you commit an offence in Kosovo, you are investigated in Kosovo and your seconding authority then have to deal with you for any offence that is revealed from that investigation. If you are contracted and you commit a criminal offence, your immunity is lifted and you are prosecuted for the offence that you have committed, so long as it's a criminal offence. This has never happened in Kosovo. There is no immunity for criminal actions, none. It is in the Brussels Codes of Conduct, it is in the uh, standard operating procedures. Nobody is, can come here and commit a murder and then wander off home. But what is responsibility of EU Lex officials when a citizen of Kosovo, like Ilir Sherimi, wrote a letter saying that money was paid, he, uh, he was a witness saying that money was paid to Francisco Florit, 300,000 euros for release uh, of, of a suspect and the suspect was, was released and the problem was that his brother was not released. So what is the responsibility of your mission to, um, to react to something like that when a Kosovo citizen reports it to you? They have a duty to investigate any serious allegation. No, you act like you're above the law. I'm sorry, um, and I am embarrassed that some of my colleagues do act like they're above the law. And the fact is, Ulex does think it is above the law, and I will deal with that later in more detail. But what should have happened and what happened are two different things. When someone complains, as a member of the public, that they have been wronged by a member of ULEX and wronged in a criminal way. Yaroslava should have made a report to the head of mission. Who should have reported to Brussels? Come on, it's not just Yaroslava. Uh, you reported it. Didn't you report to head of mission? Because the, the formal grievance we have is directed to EULEX, uh, Jonathan Rattel and Yaroslava Novotna. So didn't you yourself report to the head of mission? Yes. I did. So? 
You, you cannot what tell should, me the superiors, happen? the tops, were not informed. Why no, no. are you trying to excuse no, them? No, no, she didn't even inform the, the superiors. I know this. But even I re informed the superiors. But the problem is there is no accountability in ULEX. ULEX does not believe that it is subject to the rule of law. ULEX believes that they are exempt from the rule of law. Hang on, there's member countries who pay its, its due. They are accountable to member countries. They it are must accountable. be somebody in Brussels oversees you, Lex. They must. No, they are accountable to the member states. That is for sure. And they carry out the instructions of the member states. But the member states do not get involved in the day-to-day -day running of the mission. They do not get involved in complaints made by Iler uh, Karimi or Maria Bamie. Mm. It is outside their jurisdiction. When we make complaints, it goes at best to the civilian ops commander where it is buried. If we take action against the mission, they say, oh, no, no, we're exempt from the law. Um, the EASS, which is the external action service that works under the council with the cases that have been brought against the mission in Brussels and the ombudsman, European ombudsman, has even tried to investigate cases. Such as? Such as which cases? He has tried to investigate a number of cases of maladministration, not just with ULEX Kosovo, but around uh, in other missions. And he has written a report the external action service will turn around and say, oh, it's not us, it's the commission, the council. The council will say, no, it's not us, it's the commission. So when it comes to staffing issues or day-to-day -day running of the mission, there is no direct line of accountability. Everybody passes the buck. And the mission have been told by Mr. Giles Janvier, who was the deputy civilian ops commander, he came to the mission and he told me and a group of my colleagues on the staff committee who were talking about contracts and the ULEX responsibility for its staff, no, 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 you cannot sue. You have no what rights. What were you planning to sue? What were you exactly planning to sue? It wasn't me. Some of my colleagues were planning to sue because they have had back-to-back -back contracts for four years. And uh, under that, they become employed staff, not fixed-term contract staff. And, and their contracts had said they were res under the responsibility of their home countries, which, which was the jurisdiction they should bring their claims. No, you don't have any jurisdiction. We are exempt from the law. So I turned around to him and I said, Mr. Janvier, are you seriously telling us that as a rule of law mission, you are exempt from the rule of law. And he went mad. Woman, how dare you play with words? Started shouting at me. Uh, but that is the reality. They think they are gods. And they actually really believe that they're exempt from the law. So they do whatever they want. And that is the problem. No accountability. Hang on, can we rewind a little bit regarding the 250,000 that was allegedly given to uh, Francesca Flori for doing a job, releasing someone? Somebody got, uh, I mean, did, did it do the job in the end of the day? From what I understand of the allegation from Charimi and Hassani is that this 300,000 they believed was for the release of all three of them. From what I understand of the allegation is that when this money went to be paid, uh, Francesco Florid said, no, it was 300,000 for each one of them. I can only release one for 300,000 and Nusret Senna was released. That was what was put to me. So this then sp uh, spurred that other family members speak about this in public. Otherwise, they were going to go ahead with the corruption. If they yes. didn't mind, huh? Yeah. So in that case, they accepted the murder and they were going to give the money to release their no, family but this members. money was given in relation to Clinton bombing, not triple murder, as I understand it. So how come they got 
uh, sentenced for triple murder then? How come? They got sentenced for the Clinton bombing and for the triple murder, and uh, Mr. Nusret Senna got acquitted of both. We're going to talk to the families later. Yeah. But, uh, but was there proof in the triple murder case? Because they claim oh. they want to serve regarding Sekirocha uh, case. They have, they have confessed the blame there, not in triple murder case. What proof is there against them on this? There is proof of one witness an identification witness. And this proof is so weak that in any European country, it would not stand up to scrutiny. The witness has changed his account several times. The witness was shown, Spen Karimi, before he actually identified him in the police station. The whole case stinks. Hang on, the police showed uh, the witness who to identify before they put out a parade? This is what I am told. Furthermore, the identification Why do you witness... Why Because the identification witness has said so, Ramis Tusha. He contacted a police officer and he made a statement to that police officer... Saying? He was mistaken in his identification. That he was shown the suspect before the identification and he was identifying the person he was shown and not the person on the bridge. And I have these statements because I was reviewing the triple murder. But I was told by Jonathan, not told, I was ordered by Jonathan to close the investigation and I do not know why. Hang on, did you make a formal request to ask for retrial of the triple murder case? Or I was this just a conversation? No. Between no, two no, no. colleagues who don't like each other? No, it's much more than that. Uh, before I went to Jonathan, I went with the police. I spoke to Reshet Malaku, who believes they're innocent. I went to Yusuf Minzeni, who believes they were innocent. In the triple murder first time round, They've tried to put forward evidence to the Supreme Court to say we believe that Besnik and Spend are innocent and the ULEX judges refused it and dismissed the additional evidence. What would be their motivation to refuse and uh, not accept it? I can only say what happened. I cannot look into their minds. But at that time... Francesco Floret was the president of the Assembly of ULEX Judges. You have spoken not about two, but there were other hampered investigations. Um, in Coaditore, there was a mention of a, a land case which involves a politician, a newspaper editor, uh, about the land case inside and outside Pristina. Do you know anything about this hampered investigation? Yes, I do. What, wh who this are they talking is, about? They're talking about Asim Sula and uh, a number of other suspects. And the prosecutor in that case, who was not me, asked um, Jonathan Rattel uh, to speak to Blatza, and he refused her permission. Another prosecutor asked for a Blatza 3 case to be opened? She wanted to speak to him. I also wanted to speak to him. Which prosecutor? Can you Diane Wilson wanted to speak to Blasa about Azem Suda. Azem Sula and um, a number of other people. I don't know uh, the details of her case, but I know she wanted to speak to him and that her and Jonathan had a huge argument over it. He would not allow her to speak to Blatza. I asked to speak to Blatza because Blatza knows a lot about the illegal privatizations that went on. And I was looking into privatization cases as well and wanted to speak to him, but I too was not allowed. Um, I don't know what Jonathan's reasoning was. One has to ask him. He aren't, has to aren't prosecutors independent in their work? Can, not they, can, can they not do the investigations about, uh, about corruption that they find on their own? I am independent. But uh, when somebody is in protective custody, you can't go and see them just like that. 
you need to go through certain hoops and measures, in which case you need to go through Mr. So, so what would you say to some of our viewers who think Azim Sula is a powerful man in the PDK, member, former member of the parliament, very powerful in, uh, in Kosovo politics and leading party, that you as a mission do not dare open a case against a powerful PDK uh, member? Listen, I don't know how you or Cohaditore have got the documents that you have. And I've thought about it long and hard. I've even thought of whether this has all come out for political reasons, whether it's PDK trying to get it, LDK or LDK trying to get it, PDK, I don't know, because Kosovo is like that. Whether Jonathan um, was approached, uh, whether, you have to ask him. Why didn't he allow us to speak to Blatza? On the other hand, they may say, you got a case against Fatmi Limay, minister, powerful politicians too. You got a case against Samuel Lushtaku, powerful minister. Suleiman Selimi, Selimi ambassador uh, to Albania. It's not like you haven't been able, as ELEX prosecutors, to get to powerful politicians. No, we have been able to. But I don't know why Jonathan made the decisions he did. I you can't... I Are can't. Is, is there fear of Blasa or uh, is there distrust of Blasa within EULEX? Although he gave you, uh, would you say he is reliable? Can you, as a prosecutor, evaluate the uh, credibility of Blasa as a witness? I cannot evaluate his credibility because I have never met him, to speak to him, to assess him. But I know that Diane Wilson. Uh, thought him credible enough to speak to. I wanted to speak to him and I would then determine how credible or, in, or not credible he is, depending on how he answers the questions. But I think uh, Jonathan may have made a predetermination on his credibility. I don't know. I don't know what was in his mind when he refused our success. What do you say to people who listen to this and would say, well, uh, this is just a bloodbath between uh, professional prosecutors who did not get along for career or, or had problems uh, uh, making way, making place for each one of them in a mission that is dwindling. Not everybody's no, contracts could not, not be extended. Absolutely not. Because all these things that I have said, I've put in letters and emails going back to long before my contract came to an end. I have no need to have a bloodbath with them oh, about some this. Would say, Ms. Bame, so was, some would say you have a need to make bloodbaths because even in, in some of the last jobs you had, you sued your former employees. I sued my former employees. Who did you sue? I sued the CPS for discrimination. Who is CPS? Ground Prosecution Service in the UK. And I won substantial damages. And I'm going to sue them. And I will win. On what basis did you sue? I sued for discrimination. And I won. How much did you win? 200,000. On the topic of how EULEX staff is treated, we want to ask you about two cases. Um, first, do you know anything about Enver Zumbera's murder in the north and the murder of Audrios Shenavizus, which is the, the Lithuanian police officer killed in, near Zveshan on 19th September 2013, EULEX right. staff? I know nothing about Mr. Zumberi, but in relation to Audrius Senevitius, um, I understand that there was an internal uh, inquiry and a report was made by Mr. Yoni. The report was quite scathing of ULEX and they put pressure on the author. What do you mean scathing of ULEX? What did it say? Initially, it was saying that had ULEX provided an armoured vehicle, Mr. Audrius may still be alive today. So Audrius went to the north of Kosovo, the most dangerous place in Kosovo, uh, with a non-armed vehicle? With a soft top, non-armored vehicle. But why? Your mission looks wealthy enough. Some people are making savings. That's what the whole downsizing exercise was about. 
unfortunately, they were trying to save money in the wrong place. So did the report say this or uh, did the pressure make the report change? I think the report may have been modified slightly, but that the person who made the report stuck to his beliefs that the staff in the north should have armoured vehicles to conduct their duties. In fact, they did have armoured vehicles, and just shortly before Audrius was killed, the decision had been made, either by Hom or somebody else within the mission, to... Hom is head of, head mission. of mission. To... to Boshart, in this that, case. That they didn't need armoured vehicles, they could just use soft tops. Ne e kemi pyt edhe anën tjetër se çka thot për këtë rast, uh, sidomos bashkë në shtator 2014, sepse deshën të bëjmë një ngjarje lidhur me atë se çka uh, çka ka livrit nveri prej vdekjes së këtij polici lituanez, uh, mos ka ndru situata e sigurisë. Ne mendojmë që kjo histori është shumë e thjeshtë. Euleksi nuk na lejoi të marim intervjistën me shokun e tij, që kështu e qenë atë ditë, i cili pranoi të japë intervjistë dhe nëndërkohë kur e pytëm se Pse nuk po na jep misioni uh, leje me fol me antaret uh, e misioni që kanë qenë bashk me, ba, që kanë qenë në makinën në cilën është gjuajtur uh, e në cilën është vrar Andriusi, ata na thanë që uh, në mision me 1500 njerës, uh, ne duhet kemi një menajment të mirë të komunikimit publik dhe për këtë i kemi zëdhënsat dhe uh, leadershipin e lartë që të flas në emën të misionit dhe në emën të stafit të tyre. Uh, mirë po, atë sa kemi bisedua ne me, uh, me shokët e Audriusit, policit lituanes të uleksit, ata thanë që a i ishte një njëri i mirë, solid, kolegë edhe shokë i mirë. Kjo ishte uh, reagimi që nga ka ndërguar e Oleksi, pasi që nuk uh, na e lejuan bisedën me, uh, uh, me kolegun e këti polici lituanes. Kjo ishte që akështë për të thënë edhe për krejt uh, uh, rast e tjera, Maria Bamej, të rjavën e kaluar, ish prokurore në uh, prokurorinë specialit të Oleksit, Maria Bamej, Thank you for uh, being open with Kosovo public. Maria Bame, the ULEX whistleblower, thank you. Thank you. E dhe gjuam qka tha Maria Bame. Ne kemi kërkuar që të marim edhe prononcimim zyrtar nga ULEX i pala tjetër, por askush nga ta, nuk është reguar i gatshëm të balafaqohet publikisht me këto akuzat të rënda që kanë dalë edhe në për media tjera gjatë kësa jave në Kosovë. Ne me gjitha te i a kemi arritu që të sigurojmë anën tjetër, të dëgjojmë që ka ka pas të thot i akuzuar i kryesor i është gjukatësi i e uleksit Francesco Flori. E për të ndigjuar anën e këti rëthimi për të gjitha palve të përfshira në këtë regem, ne u mënduam të kontaktojmë edhe Francesco Floritin, pikërisht këtë gjukatës i cili në këtë emision u akuzua që i ka marë 300.000 euro për të aliruar një njëri. Zëtni Floritin e gjetëm në shtëpin e ti në udine ku po punën si gjukatës. Të shohim qka ka me na thonë aj. Zëtni Florit, apo na të regoni mas pari kur ka qenë hera e parë që keni ardhë uh, në Kosovë? Me dita, unë kam ardhë në Kosovë në marse 2008. Kam punuar gati 5 viti në Kosovë, si gjushtarë në gjukata, në gjukata në Prishtina, si gjushtarë dhe kombetarë, dhe pastaj si kretarë e gjukata dhe Euleksi nga viti 2008. Të kemi thirë në telefon uh, këtu në Skype për me u mundu me zbardh pak situatën, sepse kemi pas më shumë se uh, një burim i cili sonte në misionin tonë na thanë që ata dyshojnë që ju uh, keni marë të hola, më saksisht fjalla është pre, për 250 dhe në 300.000 euro të cilat ju akuzoni të keni marë për të aliruar një njeri uh, nga dënimi. Qka keni me thonë ju për këtë punë? Kjo janë rene. Ju të regoj, eshte pa vërtete. Eshte pa mundur dhe nuk ka 
Kur far base. Tash nese mund un flas ne gjue anglese se este machart. Urdo, s'ka problem, urdoni. Falemenderi. These uh, accuse are totally ungrounded. I have never received, never been offered any bribe from anybody. This is a nonsense. The decision to which we are referring is a decision taken by a panel where the other two members were one Norwegian judge and a Kosovo judge. And yourself, right? You are president and of the, the court. We were three of yes. judges. But as a president, you have quite, you have an I influence. Was the you are, you have an influence as a president of, uh, uh, of the judges panel to, to set a decision one way or another. You know you have influence. No, actually, uh, this is not totally correct. In the sense uh, that uh, uh, in a democratic uh, way of uh, working uh, as a judge, uh, you never impose decisions on others. Anyway... Fine. Can I ask you, uh, there are specific details about this particular decision that you made. Uh, you, uh, your name has been mentioned in official intercepts uh, that ha have been done as a part of investigation on another case, Ilir Tolai, the health secretary. In these intercepts, intermediaries are talking to the minister and to their intermediaries, they're mentioning you. This is what they are saying in the intercepts which uh, Byrne has seen and um, we have heard them in Albanian. I listened to them uh, this morning. Okay. They say that you have, um, one of the intermediaries says, I had lunch today with that Italian, do you know? Uh, that Flori, uh, we spoke to him at length. He's involved in the, in the case. It is in his position to interrupt the process entirely. And in this, in this longer conversation that continues in these intercepts, you are mentioned as a, a person who said that we'll look into this, that the prosecutor um, in, in this case is very difficult to deal with, but you will look at what there is to talk about. So um, I'm, I'm sure you know even the name of this intermediary because they claim they came to talk to you. Okay, yes. So now you are mentioning the case, uh, so-called the Tolai case. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think, uh, I've never heard of this intercept, uh, but I think uh, that uh, the intercept is referring to this Tolai case. Yes, okay. it is. The intercepts okay. are a part of official court documents that we can access, oh. uh, open court documents that we can access, uh, part of the Tolai case. Okay, very good. So, it's uh, not the case uh, of corruption uh, that you were referring before, okay? No, but uh, that's... Th okay. I have other documents referring to that. Can okay. you please just address the issue of intercepts? Why okay, are well. intermediaries well. in Tolai's case saying that they talk to you? Okay, uh, Miss Jetta, Miss Jetta, uh, this is a document uh, that, uh, if you want, uh, I send uh, to you later on uh, email. Yes, please, because we cannot see it right now, but tell me about uh, it. In, uh, in this document, uh, this is uh, a statement uh, that uh, I, I signed uh, to, directed to Maria Bamier, the prosecutor of the Tolai case, uh, where I state uh, that, uh, a, that a man called the Professor Ayupi called me to meet me. Yes, and this is Professor Ayupi is the one uh, who is alleged intermediary in Tolai's case. Okay. When Professor Ayupi called no, to meet you, me, what did finish. they say? Let, let me finish. Uh, 
if I can. Yes. Eh? In this uh, document, uh, I denunciated Miss AUP the day after he came to my office because he tried to speak to me about the Tolai case. And this document is dated 28th of June 2012 and refers to a meeting that I had with Mr. Ayupi on the 27th of June 2012 and I denunciated him to Miss Bamier because he wanted to speak to me about the Tolai case. Uh, can and, you tell me uh, just how, how does an intermediary get to you? Did you know this person before? How, I'm just interested to know yeah, yeah. How, how does in an intermediary document, in another case story. come to you? Who is he? In, in this document, uh, I tell all the story. And I say that he had come uh, some uh, times, maybe five or six times to my office. Uh, why did Ayub Kamberi, the intermediary, come to your office five times, Mr. Florit? Because, uh, because he came five or maybe six times uh, because he was, uh, he introduced himself as a professor of law and he wanted to have a cooperation with Eurex, to have some lectures from uh, Eurex judges, from myself uh, personally. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then, did, he, did he talk about lectures all those five times he came to you? Did he talk about professorial issues? Yes, indeed. He spoke about a very generic meeting, not very long. Uh, of course, uh, uh, he was uh, speaking uh, in a manner which was not very professional. But uh, there is one point that I want to make. He never had meeting with uh, me only. There was always uh, another staff member of mine present at this, mo at this meeting. Okay, and he mentioned uh, uh, when, can, can we, can we... Just a second, all these meetings uh, took place in, in my office. Uh, okay. And uh, this declaration is signed by me and uh, by my uh, personal uh, as administrative assistant. Oh, yes, so can we just, to cut the long story short for our audience, uh, can you answer, did he try to influence you, uh, to use your influence uh, to do something about Tola's case? How did he try to do it and what was your answer? Well, uh, he actually mentioned uh, the, the Tola case. My answer was, uh, I don't have anything to do with this case, and even if I had, there is nothing that I can do in this way. And I said, as it is written in, in this document, please leave my office never to come back again here. I don't want to see you anymore here. But did he, okay. come, did he come back again? Did you meet him no, again? No, of course. Okay, was this the first and time? Just a second. Was, was just this the first time? Thing. Just a moment, Mr. Floyd. Was this the first time he asked you to influence a case? Was this the first time or had he done it previous times? No. No, the, my, uh, in the first, uh, actually, in the first meeting, he just mentioned the, the, the case of Fatmir Lima, which was going on uh, at that time. And what did he but, say about the case of Fatmi Limay? No, he said that there is a, he was very generic, but uh, actually I refuse to have any, anything to do because it was not my case. And if I was the judge of, uh, of the case, I couldn't have had anything to do uh, with him. I know, so, but, but are you saying but, he uh, actually asked, he actually did ask for your help or influence over no. Fatmi Limay's case too? Not at all. No. Then in what Not context all. didn't he mention the case? He simply said, uh, you know, it was a generic uh, question and then, uh, and then uh, he, he uh, I mean, there was a person present uh, and a staff, a staff member of I mine. Know. So he couldn't go anywhere with this discourse. 
And yeah. also, uh, I said that uh, both in the case of uh, Lima and the case of Tolle, I said, I don't want any, anything, uh, I don't want to hear anything about these issues. But, but he kept coming back to your office. You kept allowing someone who was mentioning Casey, wanting your influence, he kept coming back to your office five, six times. No, just, this is the point. This is exactly the point that I wanted to mention before. Yeah. My, the policy of openness in my office was that anybody who had asked to meet me was allowed. Okay. But the condition was... Uh, that there was uh, someone else in, in uh, of my staff and uh, this would have happened only in my office okay mr florid we've explained that now i want to talk a little bit in length about a more serious accusation apart from uh, no, i want just to let me, let me finish one thing ere para che aika folur nelivia me raste tolai un camber che declarini kunder Mirë, ku uh, akuzoheni që për 300.000 euro që i keni marrë në Shqipni, në Durës, e keni liru njërin për të tri të akuzumbe, e keni liru në, në sretsenën. Ta shtë regomni, a i keni marrë 300.000 euro për me li... Uh, ju tha që si keni marrë 300.000 euro, po... Uh, e, ta, nuk kam marrë... Nuk kam marrë një euro. Mirë, Dhe... a, 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 keni, a keni shkun Shqipni? Jo, në viti 2009 dhe në viti 2008, me falni, në viti 2009 dhe në viti 2010, nuk kam ardhe në Shqipni, as një ere. Njëra prej palve, zëtë një florit, njëra prej palve e cila ka folë me neve, antar i familjes të njënit prej të dënuarve, që ka mendu që për i mlel paret për me ju pru juve në Shqipni që mi aliru vlaun, uh, për neve thot që në këtë emision ka thënë që ju ka pa juve në Shqipni, edhe me juve ka shku me negosiu avokati i ti. Ju ka pa. Nu, nuk eshte mundur. E, e, në vertete nuk eshte mundur. Unë nuk kam ardhe në, kos, në Shqipni në vitë 2009. Kjo eshte, neze a i tregon që me ka pa, a i eshte... E, Kjo nuk eshte vetem një rene, a i eshte një budala, me falni. Nëse keni pas relacione edhe mardhan një kasht mira në Kosovë, edhe me Kosovar, edhe me Shqiptar, pse e lshut e u leksin, pse uh, nuk ndejtët në Kosovë deri në fund të uh, përfundimit mandatit e u leksit? E, e, pse e, qeveria e Italisë ka ndërprek misionin teme, Ka, ka, e, ka treguar mjaftë ka, ka, e, the, the Italian government has closed my secondment to the mission. The, and, and this uh, has nothing to do, you leaving, you leaving Kosovo has nothing to do with uh, a sudden 300,000 euros that uh, you used, um, uh, that you had in your bank account? Listen, this story of 300,000 euro is totally false. I don't have, I never had this sum of money in my bank account. This is completely, okay. maybe I have 300, uh, but not 300,000, listen. Mr. Florid, didn't, uh, uh, didn't you pay your mortgage with 300,000 euros at that very time, at that time when you were here? Which mortgage? Uh, Maria Bame, the prosecutor, claimed on our program that she had, she had questioned you, wanted your statement uh, regarding uh, your influence on cases, and you had uh, confessed to her that you paid your mortgage in your house in Italy with 300,000 euros. 
Listen, uh, Miss Maria Bamier has uh, never asked me any statement uh, uh, about this case. If uh, she had asked me the statement, uh, I have would I have would I would have given the statement because I have nothing to hide. Okay, it's true. About, it's not. About this is not mortgage. written. It is. Listen, no, no. Just a second, Miss Yetta. About the mortgage, uh, I want to say that uh, the house where I live now, I'm paying the mortgage and I'm going to pay for the next 23 years. Because uh, I am not a rich person and uh, I asked the, the bank the money to buy the house. We sold the house that we had before, we used part of that money, and the remaining money was a mortgage from, uh, we asked it from the bank, and I'm paying every, every month. So you, are, are you uh, saying you never, uh, you never mentioned not on the record, but uh, on, on uh, off the record conversation with Maria Bame, you never talked about any money that was paid as your mortgage uh, in Italy at that time. You never even friendly discussed this with her. No, no, friendly. I don't. I didn't have a, a friendly uh, or confidential relations with uh, Miss Bamier when I was. Uh, a, a, a judge uh, in uh, in Kosovo. I didn't have uh, friendly relations, professional relations. Yes, but uh, I don't know why she should be interested uh, in my bank account and because uh, bank, because uh, there is because there are uh, th there are members of the family who have who are officially declaring making a complaint, wanting a retrial because they are officially saying that you, they collected money to give to you to release their family members and you only released one. Uh, as I said, uh, Spencerimi and Besni Kazani were convicted by the panel on which I was president and this decision has been confirmed by the Supreme Court in two instances. I was a panel of the member and we, as panel members, we acquitted Nusret Sena. Why? Because there were not enough elements to prove his, he was guilty. But the other two were convicted on based of the testimony of one witness which no. later, which later went, uh, went to a prosecutor in Kosovo, Milaku, to tell him that he was under pressure to identify uh, no. only one member. No, I want to tell you one thing, Miss, uh, Miss uh, Yetajara. Uh, this is uh, page 48 of uh, the decision uh, uh, on, in the case of Besni Kazani and Spencerimi. Okay. Mm -hmm. What does this it say? Is, uh, page 48. Okay. The last but one page of the decision. The decision was 49 pages. And in this decision, the, pa the panel says, uh, a last point. At the close of their uh, closing speech, uh, the prosecutor... Miss Bamier has suggested that they, if the panel had not found sufficient elements to establish the criminal responsibility of Nusret Sena for the facts described in the charges, it would have had any way to consider the facts as a failure to report criminal offenses. This means that in her final speeches, Ms. Bamier understood that the elements against uh, Nusret Sena were very weak and uh, asked 
the reformulation of the charge against him. But she was not prosecutor on this case. Ah, she was the prosecutor of the case. She came to court uh, 25 times. Mm -hmm. Why not the prosecutor of the case? What are you saying? Sorry. It was Rechat Milaku. Yeah. Rechat Milaku was the prosecutor in, uh, maybe he was in appeal. Yeah. Or maybe, I don't know, frankly speaking, I don't want to say things uh, which are not correct. Uh, maybe there was a, a second investigation against uh, the rest of uh, the group uh, who was uh, doing the attack uh, at the Sekiracha restaurant. Mm -hmm. Because no, no we're to... talking about the triple murder case. Can no, we just stay no, here? No, not the triple murder case. Not the triple murder case. We are speaking of the, of the Bill Clinton bombing case. Yes. In the Bill Clinton bombing case, there were... But I accused. asked you about triple murder because okay. uh, Spendasani and, and, and Cerimi are confessing their faults in the Sekiracha murder that they got uh, 25 years. They're not questioning that. Neither the family members, neither the victims are questioning that. What is being questioned is the triple murder case where you uh, uh, made the decision to release Nusretsena and punish the other two. Can no, I this ask is, you? Uh, this is completely wrong. I have, I have had nothing to do with the triple murder case. They bust, it is called in different ways. It is called the triple murder case. It is called the Le Pen's Bridge case. It is called the Baftiu Brothers yes. case. It is the case and, in and which... Uh, these days it's called the Flori taking 300,000 euro case. Now, can you tell me, what, did, did EU Lex ever investigate this? Because these families made official complaints to EU Lex. So I'm interested to know whether there was an open investigation uh, against you. Do you know anything about this? Frankly speaking, what I know is only from the newspapers of Kosovo. You have never been contacted by EULEX leadership or EULEX investigative uh, bodies? No. By the EULEX prosecutor, it was me to ask them if I was under investigation and and at the time they said that there is only a preliminary investigation you are not formally uh, registered in uh, in the books so to speak and and did anyone so they uh, when did they inform me inform you that there was a preliminary investigation going on against you. This may, uh, this may have happened uh, in uh, April uh, of uh, this year. April this year. But no, they, they, they said uh, attack and reguar che ne atko nu kiste time uh, but... ata camberni e declarata ku ata tregoine che nu kai time kunder florit. Po, uh, mir po polet, polet në Kosovë janë intervistuar. Polet në Kosovë, uh, hetim para prak të ne në kuptën hetim. Edhe hetimi para prak është hetim. Nuk arë si gjustar për 5 vitit, e, normal që kuptoj. Mir, atëherë, hetimi para prak është një loj hetimi. Um, atë ka marë dikush në pytje ndo njëherë, zëtë një florit lidur me këto akuza. Ja, formalisht jo. Neze, neze me kërkojnë, unë jam gatë të, të përgjigjet krej. Um, Ka problem. Are you sure problem. you never spoke, nobody in EULEX leadership worried about even, even their reputation? Did they never even contacted you to see what's your side of the story? No. Nobody? No, 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 just a second. Un ka qenë kontaktuar, ka... Exactiste nie viti. Nga e, Mats Matson, a te here, a i iste chef e departimenti executive ulexit. Mat Matson, a po? Mat Matson. Po e di. Ede? A i me ka fituar ne pristin per nie 
Interviste. Apo shecit pas kam ftu për interviste, do me thonë. Po, po, por ate, në të kohë, ishte vetem një një jetime e brenshme, administrative, të regojme. Ok? Um, Na këtu i thujmë hajtim preliminara, saj. Urna, po, edhe? Um, kam ardhë në Kosova brenda dy dite. Ata me kanë kontatuar, u, mas dita kanë qenë e uleksi. Un kam shqaru, qëfar mundë të shqaroj, dhe pas këtë takime, Mac Macon dhe një tjetër një tjetër këshiltar ridik nga Eulex ka përpilluar një report kjo është report e që ka thot raporti a thot që janë kanë përfundu jetimet a thot që ata të regojnë ata të regojnë nuk është fjala time kjo është fjala e brendshme që përfundon jetime administrative e brëndshe e uleksit. Ata të regojnë që nuk ka baze për akuze a kunde flori. A mund të një me ndoqa? Ndo shka para ka që marë ga antares e familjes e Besni Kazani. Por nuk ka kur farë arsie për të me ndu që e Florit ka marë atë para. Zëtë një Florit, a mund dëni me maqu që atë raport? A du të andoni atë raport me ne? Si që rist, kjo është rezervime, konfidencial. U nuk e dëgjirot. Tjetër dy dokumentat e mund. Por kjo është konfidencial. E pse është konfidenciale? Nëse, zëtë një Florit, nëse ju, nëse ju jeni të bindur në pafajsin e juj, Pse qka ka të fshekta të kur ju të regut onë në ju historis, e ona tjetër që ju akozon juve, gjithashtu e ka bo këtë zyrtarisht. Qka ka të fshekta në ato dokumente që nuk mund t'i ndani me ne? Eshte shumë qartë. Eshte shumë qartë. Ne në fund e report, ata të regojnë që unë nuk jam fajtor. Jo, jo, nuk është e qartë, sepse ne nuk e kemi pa dokument. We haven't seen that document that says that you are not guilty. In the beginning you said you were never questioned, then you, then it appeared that you were invited to be interviewed. No, no, just a second. I didn't say that I, I said that I, I was un kantreguar, që unë kure nuk kanë qenë intervistuar nga prokurore u leksit. Por, ka një viti tashë. I asked you about, were you ever interviewed by u leks? I didn't say by prosecutor of u leks. I asked you three times and third time you admitted you have been. Same way, we do not know whether you're guilty or not. It's your word against... Two other people against family members and a prosecutor right now. So can we see the document which makes you uh, makes you not uh, not guilty? Can we see it? Okay, no problem. I will send this document as well. Thank. It's, a, it's not a problem. Th thank you very much, Mr. Florit. I will very... send tonight uh, this document. Then uh, the denunciation that I did uh, of uh, Mr. Uh, Professor Yupi. And also the decision of uh, uh, the decision of the case, where it is written what I said before that uh, not even uh, Miss Bamier believed uh, that uh, uh, Nusret Sena was guilty. Is uh, it okay for you? Is it enough? If we see the document right after the program, not tonight, I would like to, you to send it to us after the program. Um, okay, no if problem. You don't mind. Immediately. Immediately after the problem. Thank I don't you have very anything much. to hide. Thank you very much. Fi final question. Final question for you. Uh, do you have immunity? Uh, okay. As a foreign staff having worked in Kosovo, do you think you have immunity over criminal charges? Um, or would you, uh, would you or, or do you not? No. Uh, uh, formally, I have the immunity, but the immunity can be withdrawn by 
the mission and uh, in uh, agreement with uh, New York. And actually, it has been uh, partially removed. Would you voluntarily, would you voluntarily give up your immunity um, to sure, face justice? No problem. They can, they can uh, investigate uh, whatever they want. And would you come to Kosovo for this, mind. or would you want, um, if if it's up to you, do you, do you accept to be to be to, to to face justice in Kosovo? For sure. No problem. No ka problem. No ka dushim. Um, uh, um, no kam uh, yam nie justar ne itali. Uh, um, kam uh, ber create correct. No kam kur far te bei me me che eh, te rane e che ho este nie nie film no okay. che este nie realite mir uh, zodni uh, zodni florit fali minderit se can i say one last thing yes urna zodni florit ca kenime fan e do you think uh, that makes sense to receive money only from one uh, of the accused uh, so that the other two will denunciate you? Do you think uh, that makes sense, uh, as uh, the brother of Besnik Ezani has said, uh, that uh, I would be paid uh, 10,000 euros uh, for the next 25 years? That is something for a judge to decide. We can only okay. ask questions. But for a final question, media here, um, these days they're writing not only about you, they're writing about Ms. Bame's also um, declarations or uh, reports she has done. Um, and they are saying uh, the other side has also portrayed uh, Ms. Maria Bame as mad. Do you think she's crazy? I'm not a psychiatrist, actually. Excuse me? I'm not a psychiatrist. But you I are a judge. It's, it, often judges uh, need to decide on that too. Often evaluate people's personalities. So as a professional in that field, would you say she's a bit crazy? No. No? I don't say that she's crazy. I don't say she's not crazy. I don't say anything about that. Anybody can judge by himself, okay? Mm. Then why would she make uh, such accusations? Do you wonder what her motivations are? Uh, the accusation against me? You and, um, and people who have stopped um, certain investigations, internal investigations. Listen, uh, about what he did uh, and the information that he leaked uh, uh, about the mission, uh, it's clear that it is motivated uh, by a sort of revenge, in my opinion. Revenge That's for what? Sure. Revenge that, for what? Because she was having uh, uh, problems in her office. And at the end, uh, she has been suspended. What, what kind of problems? I, I don't know. I know uh, only what I read from the newspapers. Yeah, uh, the newspapers have written about it. Uh, the problem that there was was she has an internal investigation against her over a parking, bad parking. That is what uh, what EULEX has started internal investigation don't on. You don't, Disciplinary frankly speaking, procedure. You don't, frankly speaking, you don't suspend a staff member for a parking space, right? Right. Okay. So, so what do you... Okay, so Maybe. this is a story told for those who want to, to hear it, okay? But when, when we don't have you, Lex, telling us why they suspended and, her... Uh, another thing, about, uh, about uh, the reason of the accused against me, hmm, the reason is quite clear. Besni Kazani and Spencerimi are going to serve the rest of their life in jail. Now, I am, uh, I was the president on uh, the first uh, trial that found them guilty. It's clear that uh, if they say the judge was corrupted, all uh, the trial falls down. Mr. Florit, 
Thank you very much for the interview. Thank you to you, Miss Yeta. It was nice to meet you. Și cu zi în dëgju am akuzat e rënda të ish prokurorës e uleksit Maria Bamej, e dëgju am që ka pat me thonë gjykoci Francesco Flori, tash po du me i pyet edhe qytetart e Kosovës, të cilet kam pritur drejtësi edhe nga zonja Bamej, edhe nga zotri Floridur, e edhe nga e uleksi. Me mua në studio janë Arben Baftiu, Vëllau i të vrari, Suleiman Baftiu në rastin vrasja e tre fisht në kaçanik të ura e lepencit. Mendu Baftiu, Babai i të vrari, 16 vjeqar, urim Baftiu, Bujar Baftiu, i mbijetuari nga kjo nxarje, i plagosu rënd me 11 pluma, dhe i mer Baftiu, Babai i viktimës së tret në këtë rast, në shat Baftiu, 28 vjeqar. Po ashtu, me neve në studio është edhe Florim Hasani, vëllau i Besnik Hasanit, i cili momentarir gjendet në vuajtje të dënimit për 33 vjeqar, vjetë burg, lidur me këtë rast për këtë vrasje. Falim derit të gjithve që jeni këtu, e di që nuk është letë për familjë në jujtë të jeni këtu në një studio, po me gjitha të falim derit, për maturin e treguar, mas pari Arben, apo na tregon, qka saksisht jeni të kërku ju si familjarë të viktimave? Kemi besu në organet drejtsis, që drejtsia të vjetë në vendin e vetë dhe të djetë kush dhe pse. Kur po thuni drejtësi, të regom një, a keni lypë këte prej u leksit? Po sigur e shqipo edhe dje e kam dërzu një kërkes. Zyrtare? Një kërkes zyrtare me një zëdetjetin dhe dhejtin. Qëka keni kërku saksisht prej u leksit? Kemi kërku rigjikim edhe prova shtes të mirën edhe të mirën parasish edhe rastit këthejet në rigjikim. Cilat prova shtes? Prova shtes të prokurorës Marja Bamje, të prokurorët të vendurë Reshat Milaku, edhe dëshminja e Ramis Tushës, i cili në impresion në palve të saktuar, nuk ka të regu të gjithë të vërtetën lidhër me vrasin. Dëshminja i është dhonë Reshat Milaku të prokurorë special i Republikës Kosovës. Dëshminja e ditë dënuar dhe shpenë qërimi dhe besni Hasani, dëshmije prokurorës Marja Bamje, që i ka jetu këtë rast dhe i ka informatat e hëllësishme në këtë rast. Mirë, të regëm që ka ta e uleksi kur ti kërkove në këto baza me ngritë rrë gjykim? E uleksi krepkot zëtri Gjanatel Ratel. Që është shefi prokurorës speciale? Shefi prokurorës speciale, më tha që mos i beso gazetës shtypit. Që ka i bjen kjo? Kjo i bjen edhe vetë si më të kuptu që ka nga ka ndodhë. Kje i bjenë që s'ka drejtësi. Letë hapët në regjikim edhe atit të vërtëtuën faktet edhe dëshmi shtes. Apo beson ti që kjo është veç shpifja dhe filmi medjave? Po, këto edhe opinioni publik e din që në këtë krim nuk janë të involvu në vetëm këta dy. Ka edhe tjerë të involvu. Kush që ndrënë masë kësaj? Pse hezitohet të ri hapët rasti? Normal, me të vrovë lau 16 vjeqar, edhe unë i kësha do është njëjtën për gjigje për te, si do mështë dikush ka qëri, një 16, një 17 vjeqar, që me siguri s'kam pasë asë ko më rritë qaq me u përshin, krim të organizum, po falim derit arben që ke ardhe, di që i rëmë për ty me i rikujtu që to spodu me me ju rikujtu qastet fështira, po po du thjeshtë në të regu që ka po lëpë një prej drejsis, po du me ndigju edhe me nduhun, me ndo, pse po kërkoni familja ju me rihap këtë rrasë saksisht? Pse po menoni që duhet mu i rihap, si pas josh? E kemi vret si aboni pa drejsi shumë e mole. A e një ju të knashëm e vetë primit e u leksit që i ka bo dejtash? Shumë pak. Na, si mas informatave dhe dëshmingve, poplit edhe gazeta, na po mendojmë që njështë shetitën halat lirë në për komunën e ka që një këtë. Po jarë tje i mbijotuar nga kyrast, a beson se deri ta shka pol drejsi? Jetë të fëndet, për të e sënë, drejsi nuk ka pas, drejsi ja kone përgjismu me pi filimit edhe në barën edhe rezultatet të regunë si a kone përgjithmu me gjithse 
në viktima i mi barazu me kriminelin, edhe në salt gjigjit, edhe në gjikot, kemi shprej se në këna posë matë mohë e kur e uleksi, ka orë në kësu, që i do të thotë të vërtejten, po jo, kur këtë ekspertizma, këtë të kanë në lonë që nuk mund në të më bëmë e divejt, nuk ka shonë së më bëmë në atë, edhe përfundimisht vendosim e divejt, më dhe nuk. Falim dirit. Florim, apo na të regën, qëka është puna ma konkretesh direkt me ty, kësha dosht me ditë shumë shkurtimisht për fund të emisionin, qëka është puna 300.000 euro, kusht t'i ka kërku parit, dhe qëfar garansie këni marë që ka me u kry puna kër t'i mbljadh një parit? Kusht t'i ka kërku parit? Mu mi ka kërku parit Francesco Flori, për ndrej që i këna mbljadh me nësë recenën. Ka dalë, personalisht Francesco Flori apër mes dikujt? Ja në bë mes advokatit Mamut Halimit. E kush ja ka kërku Mamut Halimit, vetë Francesco Flori apër mes dikujt? Ja, ja, vetë Francesco Flori ka qenë. Qka i ka thonë, qka i ka thonë sa këtë sështë Mamut Halimit? I ka thonë që për këtë pun për me kry, me i liru këto djemë për e akuzës, i donë ka dhëtë mjerën në vitë, për një vitë që ka është kësha kushtonë, dhëtë mjerën në vitë i ka kërku, për një vitë mja ekë. 33 vjetë janë në denumë. Edhe ju i kërim ledhë pare, ta? A e kërim ledhë 270 mjerë e kërim ledhë. Oni kërim dhëmë 50 mjerë, tjetë kërim ledhë. Kaj kam dhëmë, nësë recejna kam ledhë. A përë vaki, zëtëni asani që këto pare në fund nuk kanë shku të Francesco Florit, po ju kanë mashtru juve? Ja, së është e mundur. Pse së është e mundur? Së është e mundur se na... Në vetë cena ka qenë i akuzum i parë për vrasin e trafisht edhe a fetë doloshi, a grënë doloshi, kanë qenë që janë marë në pytje, më në jarë që atë nesër të janë marë në pytje, edhe janë liru për këtë akuzo. Atë punë e ka më vetëm Francesco Flore, i ka marë parë dhe i ka liru cenën. E pëse si në liru, së liru vlojat, nëse i paske pagu parët? Unë jam këmë dhonë nëse cenës parët. Pse i ke besu? I këmë besu shumë. A ja ki dhonë dorë, apo ja ki dhonë me dikon? Dorë dhe kam dëshmi, me marëm që rrimin për mbashkë. Dhe në fund, në fund, a ke shku në Shqipnite vetë? Jam kanu me Mahmut Halimin, jam kanu. Ti ki qenë me Mahmut Halimin në Shqipni? Në Shqipri, kem shku, i këmë të rrë. E këmë dhonë një deklerat, jetë nuk di sa e kemë marë në deklerat, E këmë dhonë edhe pse e mohën, më brojtë si besnikët Mamut Halimi, thëtë se nuk kam qenë, bo ato janë sene që vërdetohën. Mirë, ti më të rego vetëm ka, unë e këmë po deklaratën që e ke dhonë të e uleksit, të jetimet, para jetimet që e mbo të e uleksit, mirë po më të regom, ti personalisht, ke shku, si pas te, ke shku me Mamut Halimi në Shqipni, pse ke një shku? Ka pas më taku me Francesco Florin dhe u taku me të e këmë pa kur u taku. Qka ke pa saksisht me sytë tu, Florin Kalzam? Unë e këmë pa Francesco Florin ku e ka prit në dursë. Ku e ka prit saksisht? Ku në dursë? Në dursë ku janë ato terminalet e Ania vedin. Në cilin vit, në cilin datë atë kujtohet? Nuk u kujtojt me datë, vitin është kërë dhe nuk besnikën që atë ko, dimi e... Nuk jam i shikojt që në vitë, po e këmë dhonë deklaratën ati. E, a i ki po të ju adhonë pare në dorë? Pare të nuk e këmë po. Takimi ka zhvillua fër 4 orë, ka një në një, i këmë për cilë dhe eri atë edhe e këmë prit ma më të alimin, prapë kur u këthi. Masi e ka përfëndu takimin, u këthi me mu prapë për Kosovë. Kur ka shku ma mund të halimi në një e me Francesco Florin, a i ka pas parit me veti? Ja, 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 s'ka pas. O janë konë të mbisedime për atë punë. Edhe masa ndej ka ndryshu kretë sa, ka ndryshu sanet në basi u këthi, në masin a ka premtu, e ka liru vetëm në sërë cena. A jo ndonë në dorë, a në transfer bankar, a qysh? Ne ja kem dërzu në sërë cenës në dorë parët. E qysh i ka marë flori si pas te? Qysh i ka marë flori? Kujt ja ka dërzu, kujt ja ka dërzu nësre cena? E ka pas, a fe, a fe, nësre cena e ka pas në lajnë e ti a fejtin, a fejtë cenën. 
E qyshja ka dhona fecena florit, si pas jush? Ka pas takime, ma mërmen që ka pas takime. Për mes Mamut Alimi ta për mes kujt? Në për mes Azem Vlasti. Tu kanë qenë të dim brajsh të mvëllu me Francesco Florin. Qa ka ndonë gjykim mas këti momenti që keni dhonë pare, si pas jush? Në gjykim është marrë vendimi vetëm në stretsejnë amulliru. Pra po të pysë, qështë e sigur që shtë pare të marrë parasysh që e njifni në stretsejnën, që kanë shku saksi është e flori? Qka ju shtin me garantu që aja ka dërzu flori? Jenë në shtin e vesajnë në i ka lip, në nuk jem kon të imlidhë pare të alaë, a i ka lip ka 270 mjerë për kryet njërit me liru. Më në kuptan. E kur i keni dhonë një paret edhe së kry puna, që i keni dhonë një ndërmije si t'ju i që e liru? E po, për atëherë e mamutit dhe në trataj, nuk po kam më mundësi me bisedu me ta. Kur shi trataj? Në për Francesco Florin, gjë e se nuk po dhonë tash më me vazhdu, A faktikisht ato pare që i kem ledh janë konë të mamë për qatë person që i ka kërku, edhe u liru në Srecena, mërë vesh. Se për qka? E në Srecena u konë i akuzu më shumë se vlaj i në krim. Zmiazoni, në fund ditës, ka njerë që mujnë me thonë, po ka dalë se këta janë familjarë të dvramen, normal që këta kanë qefë, këta i kanë bloznit mrena, këta janë zërë me i shpëtu edhe ta shë mujnë me thonë gjithë qka. Francesco Flori veç me të kauzu që a tha, po naturisht që ata janë bërg, ata kanë me më shojtë mu se unë i kumë shtim bërg. Qka i thuti që aty në njerëzve? A ka më nësi vetë në bërg. Unë nuk kumë kërku vlaje me dalë jashtë burgit më liru e krejtë, ose me me shti dikan tjetër pa fajshë më rëna, ne e kemë kërku vetëm drejtsin, atë së e meritëm vlaje më qofse e ka për cilë rastin për me i ndimu krimit një qin hapa, po një mi hapa, në të merë denimin atë sa e meritan. Kurse njerëzit tjerë që kanë bëvë rrasje, që janë kanë në grupë me të, ato dhije që janë në stretësi në agrë ndoloshi, edhe afet ndoloshi, ato rrinë në të lirë, që ti dhe në për qëtetit që tha Arbeni Majarët Kaçaninkit e Ferizaj, ta konë edhe unë i shofë që nuk është kja në regëllë që ka ndodhë, Falim derit, Lerim Asani, nga Gjermania, i cili e dëshmën, po dëshmën që i kam ledhë paret me adhon, me adhon, gjukacit me cilë ne bisedum, i cili po thot, jo, shikus nderum, dhe gjutë, të gjutë, të gjitha falë, marim bamejnë, ish përkurorën e uleksit, e cila insistën se është preashtuar nga e uleksit, përshka këse nuk ka qenë pjesë i strukturave të cilat i kanë heshtur jetimet Kosovë. E dhe gjuham Francesco Florin anën tjetër, i është gjukasin e uleksit të cili mohon të gjitha akuzat ndaj ti për korupcion, i dhe gjuham edhe e i pam kërkesat e familjarve të viktimave dhe të akuzuarve të cilet kërkojmë rrigjykim në rastin e vrasjes e tre fesht të ura i lepencit në anfërsit të kaqanikut. Shpresojmë që e uleksi dhe të vendos të jetë më transparent dhe më i hapur ndaj publikut e jo të heshtë në kësë momente të rënda për tërë sistemin e drejtsis Kosovë. Ju vazhdoni në shkruani raportoni në kalzo.com deri të ajtën e vashme nga neve në atën e mirë.